Over the weekend, Juventus lost 2-0 to Roma. As both teams' tactics cancelled each other out, the attacks mainly came from counter-attacks, which I'll discuss later. Roma mainly fell back into a 4-1-4-1 middle-high block. By using this formation, Roma were able to be very compact in the centre, not allowing Juventus to find players between the lines. Here is another example. Roma take out all the passing lanes to players between the lines. In their own half, they went into an even more compact low block, leaving very little to no space between the lines for Juventus to exploit. This meant that Juventus had most of the possession, but they weren't able to do much with it. Pjanic would usually fall back to orchestrate the build-up for Juventus. The main reason to pull Pjanic back is that Chiellini and Caceres aren't great on the ball and don't always play the through ball when it's on. Dybala played as a false nine and often dropped into midfield to try and create temporary overloads and advance up the pitch. Because Roma were very compact, there was often space in front of their block for Pjanic to receive or to pick up loose balls. When they got Pjanic free on the ball, the Juventus attackers would immediately look to make a run behind. The game therefore got into something of an impasse, with Roma not seeing much of the ball and Juventus unable to play through Roma's block. This meant that the only dangerous moments for either team were counter-attacks. Juventus often had counters after winning the ball in midfield. Their first counter was quite decent, with width and depth on all sides and Ronaldo making a dribble to the inside. Ronaldo's dribble attracts defenders towards him which allows Dybala to get free. His shot is just saved by the goalkeeper. For the second counter-attack, Juventus again win the ball in midfield. However, instead of playing a ball at once and keeping the tempo in the attack, Cuadrado takes four touches, then plays the ball to the same side he's already on, which allows Roma to get back in formation behind the ball. This is a problem Juventus had more often during the game. Juventus's third counter-attack. They win the ball in their own half, and six Roma players are in front of the ball. Ronaldo makes a great run, but the pass isn't played. On the left side, Matuidi should have kept running to provide width on the left side. With the ball to Ronaldo not being played, the pass to Cuadrado should now be given. This was a rather simple but very effective counter from Juventus. Matuidi wins the ball in midfield and immediately plays it forward. Ronaldo makes a great run, but just offside. And then this is the last Juventus counter-attack we'll look at. Juventus again win the ball in midfield. Ronaldo plays the ball to Dybala. The pass could have been a bit more into the space. The overlap from Chan is good as it provides an extra option for Dybala on the outside. The only downside of this being that Chan now ends up on his weaker foot. Here Cuadrado stopped his movement. He could have made a run inside to try and get a cross or score if the keeper wasn't able to direct the ball outwards. Now let's take a look at Roma's counter-attacks. Roma usually won the ball quite deep in their own half. Here they win it and six Juventus players are in front of the ball. Dzeko has good movement to the side to make it a 3 vs 3. It's very important that the player on the ball has passing options on either side of him. Kleiber makes a good run to make it 4 against 3. El Shirawi on the ball could have played the pass a bit more into the space or commit to Chiellini more to really free up his teammate. If the previous pass would have been more into the space, Kleiber could now have received a cross. The ball is now shot onto the crossbar. Other options would have been the cutback cross to El Shirawi and the cross to Dzeko at the second pulse. Both take up good positions. Here's another attack for Roma. This time the ball is won in the midfield which creates a 5 vs 4 situation. So far so good, with width on both sides and depth in the centre. The player on the ball makes a good dribble to the inside. The pass to Kleiber on the far side would have probably been the best option. Now the ball is played to the left which ends it with a useless cross. This time Roma have a 4 vs 4 situation. Remember, there should always be passing options on either side of the player with the ball. If the player in the centre isn't able to make the underlap in time, Jekyll should move to the side and pull a defender with him. The run is made too late and the attack ends with a shot from distance. Here, Chiellini plays a bad ball during build-up and Roma can counter-attack, which creates a 3 vs 2 situation. Jacko should now make the run in between the two central defenders, as this will pull the second central defender with him, opening up space on the far side. Jacko now makes the run too late and Juventus are able to get back into position. 
in comparison, let's look at this counter-attack from Man City against Manchester United, with Aguero making that run in between the central defenders. Aguero pulls the central defender with him, which creates a lot of space for Sane to receive. In the very last minute, Roma had a decent counter-attack with width on both sides. The player on the ball could have committed to the defender a bit more though. But it's enough for Dzeko to put it home and confirm the win for Roma. And that's all for this video. If you made it to the end, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Links to Patreon, Instagram and Twitter are all in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.